Jay Clark for Renthal. In this video, we're going to show you how to install grips, uh, which might sound pretty simple. So it's, it's not too difficult, but Renthal is kind of known for grips. Lots of choices of grips. We're just going to talk a little bit about some techniques here and in, in installing those. Uh, today, we're going to install a set of Kevlar dual compound grips. Very good grip. Uh, lots of choices here. So we're going to show you how to install those. On this Honda, we're going to remove the stock grips. It's not too difficult in these Hondas to, to get them off. We'll show how to do that and give you some tips there. If you have a Suzuki, Kawasaki, some, some bikes, the, the stock grip on the right side on the throttle tube is kind of, we call it vulcanized. It's stuck on here. Here you can see we've cut one away, tried to cut it. You simply can't get them off. Get them off. And you can try to grind them and so forth, but kind of sketchy and doesn't really work too well. So your options are, are running a, a throttle tube. You got uh, Motion Pro makes plastic ones. You got uh, Works Connection makes a nice uh, billet one. Those are some of your options on those bikes that you don't have a choice, and so that way you can change grips regularly much easier. So we're going to show how to install some uh, Kevlar dual compound grips. Okay, so we're going to start by removing the, the grips, and in this case you can cut off the, you can cut off grips if you like, if the grips are really tight, if you're not planning on using them, they're, they're ruined. In this case, these grips are still, uh, they're not too hard to get off, so we just pry a screwdriver underneath, put a little uh, contact cleaner, squirt, um, a little air uh, can, can help. We've scored a little air in there. So compressed air if you had a compressor. And then you just start twisting. If it doesn't come off real easily, you can squirt in some more contact cleaner. Or you just start twisting that, twisting it. And once you get it twisted, you just pull and it comes right off. See? Even Dave can do it. So same thing on the throttle side, you want to be careful. You don't have as much room to get in here, so you want to be careful not to poke a hole through it or anything if you want to save it. So you just squirt a, squirt a little contact cleaner in there. Now this side, with even plastic underneath usually, and the grip glue, it'll loosen up. A lot of times a little easier. Squirt some air in there, and you can start twisting it. Once you get it broke loose, then it'll usually just start twisting right off. And you can see the old uh, excess glue there that we'll want to clean up. Contact cleaner on there you can wipe all this glue away. If the glue's old and dry, you can uh, scrape it off with maybe a razor blade and just scrape off all the old excess glue. So now we're going to clean off the same thing on the other side. Want to clean it off. On this side, if you've had a couple grips, uh, a grip or two installed, you sometimes can have a lot of uh, excess glue. Want to try to get it all off as best we can before we get started installing our new grips. So at the end of the throttle tube, we want to make sure we get all the, any glue out of there that it could have fallen inside. And then it's a good idea to cover up the hole. If you have a hole on this side, if you have an open throttle tube, you want to cover it up with a little sticker or something. Here I just cut out a sticker. Uh, you can use some tape or uh, the inside of a, on the, some graphics you have a little hole sometimes left. You want to put a little sticker on the end of the bar to prevent any new glue from going in there when you uh, put the new grip on. So at this point we're ready to pour some of our Renthal grip glue inside the grip. We want to drip down inside a ways and we don't want to use too much but we also want to have enough. We don't want it oozing all over the place making a mess. So as it kind of runs down, we can kind of squeeze the grip and get it worked in to where it's kind of evenly dispersed throughout the grip. We can feel it getting down all the way to the bottom of the grip so it's even. And as we put it on the bike, we're going to install it on the bar and we're going to hold up the grip. We want it to get a little tacky, so we let it sit for just a, a minute or so and get a little tacky and we slide it on to the bar end. So at this point, ready to install. It's a good idea just to hold up, lets all the air out of the, of the bar as you go. And this is going to be the kind of tough part. You're kind of pushing and pulling up on the thing, on the, on the grip. As we get it all the way on, now we can start to turn the grip, spin it around. We got it evenly dispersed and we're in the correct position. So at this point we got the, the half waffle underneath so our hands in the correct position with this grip. So Second verse, same as the first here, same thing as the, 
the left side of the grip, we just coat it the inside, let it drip down a ways. You can poke a hole in the end of the grip if, if you like, if you're fighting, uh, um, you know, getting all the air out. In this case, we're just uh, w working it in and we're just, we hold the grip up to make sure we get all the air out of the grip as we install it. At this point, we slide the grip on and then we're going to lift up on it to uh, make sure that the air stays out as we push it on. And we're kind of pushing as we're pulling up. And we can twist it a little bit to kind of spread the glue out throughout the grip, make sure all the air is out of the grip. We, we line it up correctly, just as we did the left side with the half waffle underneath. And like so, done. Good job, Dave. So at this point, we're just going to, we're squeezing our grips, making sure everything feels good. They should feel fairly firm. If, if they don't feel right, you're going to need to start over and, clean, you know, pull them off, re-clean, and redo. But in this case, they feel nice and firm. We squeeze them. Now we're going to wire tie them down. So now we're going to cut some wire, and, and you, there's various thickness of wires. This one's about 32 thousandths thick wire. There's also thinner wire. With thinner wire, you can make two loops around the grip, which is what a lot of the factory guys do. And so um, wire, wire tying, the, these tools are fairly inexpensive. You can get them from Motion Pro and many other companies. Simply pull it down tight. That's, it's as simple as that, and we're going to do that in three spots on each grip, evenly throughout the grip. So we kind of space uh, you know, somewhat evenly across the grip. Now we're putting our, our second one on with our wire tie. If you go too tight, the wire will break and you'll just have to redo it. Um, the wire's not too expensive. The wire tool's available and uh, wire's readily available, uh, easy to get. So right now we're going to cut the excess wire off and we're going to leave just a little stub about that long. We're going to do that in three spots all the way across. Now the, it's very important that you get these wires tucked well into the grip. The grip is thick enough where you can push it into the grip to where it's kind of embedded in there. So you want to push it up as, as, as well as you can so it won't snag your, your hand obviously or your, your grip at all. And you can give it a push it all the way up in there and give it a little tap with a hammer so it's all the way in there really nice and then put your hand on there to feel your bare hand to make sure to feel that you don't feel anything at all sticking protruding So at this point, our grips are on, uh, glued, glued's tight, and safety wire's on nice. We want to give them uh, eight hours to dry, so it's best to do it day before you plan on riding, uh, not the morning of. Install uh, Renthal Grip Donuts, prevent some blisters on your thumbs, and uh, you're ready to go. Got those on both sides, ready to hit the track.